I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeYouSoft.com Reviews, and this is the Totem S 40 Watt Laser Engraver from Two Trees Technology. It has a maximum print area of 30 centimeters squared in a solid four-sided frame, roughly half a meter squared. The actual laser module is a fixed focus of around two centimeters, and it outputs a total of up to 5.5 watts or 5,500 milliwatts. Some people will ask why this is marketed as 40 watts if it's actually 5.5 watts. Well, that's just how these machines are sold. 40 watts is the power draw from the plug. 5.5 is the output power of the laser module itself. Still, 5.5 watts is enough to, so they say, cut through about eight millimeter thick wood. And it's well beyond the sort of power you would legally buy in, say, a laser pointer, for instance. And it has the potential to do some very serious damage if you're not careful he says with numerous burn marks on the work surface. All right, cards on the table, neatly engraved laser cut ones anyway. This is my first real laser engraver. I have played with an $80 toy thing from Wish or something like that, but it was a joke. I hope that it won't be the last one, however, like 3D printers, laser engraving is an immense topic, one that you will need to spend some time learning, but one that opens up so much creative possibilities and is a fantastic addition to any workshop, perhaps even more so than a 3D printer. So the Totem Mess arrives in a kit form in a compact but roughly five kilogram box. And although there's not so many parts and the bolts and nuts are neatly labeled in separate baggies, I did find the instructions and diagrams to be far too small print. The diagrams aren't clear. So some familiarity with this type of V profile aluminum sections would be useful. It's been a while and I misread the instructions, meaning that I put the T-nuts in the wrong way and nothing was grabbing. So look, get familiar with the way that the T-nuts slide into the profile beforehand if you're not already familiar. I also found some of the bolts were perhaps slightly too long, so I ended up using some little washers just to raise them up a little. And when it came to wiring, I struggled because the instructions felt a bit incomplete. You know, that meme about how to draw an owl, start by drawing three circles, then draw the rest of the owl. Yeah, it's a bit like that. In the end, I pulled all of the wires out of the cable tidies that they were sent already attached to and just started from scratch. Obviously, I did complete the build. It's not that complex. After all, we're dealing with two axes rather than the three axes of a 3D printer. But I do think the instructions should be made bigger, more complete and using actual photographs rather than the thin line drawings that they have. The bad English wouldn't be so bad if there were decent photos to refer to. And it's at this point I discovered there was in fact a comprehensive instructional video on the SD card, though it didn't quite match up to the model I have here. It looks like they've made some improvements and upgrades uh, since then, such as neatening up the cables as well as adding this uh, laser shield, um, which is exactly the right height for focusing the laser. So you no longer need a two centimeter high test cube just to focus it. But as I said, I got it built anyway, and unless you're an absolute beginner and have never had a 3D printer or anything like this before, I think you'll get by fine. Anyway, construction out of the way, it was time to plug it in and turn it on. Now, unlike most 3D printers, there's no control system or screen or SD card slot to print pre-programmed files from, so you will need to connect it over USB and have some sort of a host machine to control it. I haven't investigated if something like Octoprint would work for this. There might be an option like that out there, but for now, the software supplied is PC only, and if you want to use Mac, you'll need to pay for a license of some third-party software. On the Windows side, you can use Laser GRBL. That's included on the SD card. Once that was running, I had to do an update, then install the CH431 serial drivers from the tools menu, uh, then load in the configuration file supplied on the card, and finally import some custom buttons also from a file on the card, and then you're all set. And I'm pleased to say it worked right off the bat. The X and the Y axis was responsive. The laser was responsive. In fact, I very nearly managed to burn a massive hole in my desk. Pro tip, the button there that says highest laser power, don't touch that. Just don't, okay? Trust me. Bad button. Who are you? Make sure the very first thing you do is to put down a bit of scrap wood. Oh, yeah, that's powerful. Whoops. Uh, or at least use a rubbish old table that you're not going to care about. Now, unlike 3D printers, this doesn't have any end stop sensors. So you need to move the head and define your home point every time you turn the machine on, making sure it doesn't exceed the print area or your motors will crash into the edge. 
It's easier than it sounds, mind. You work off a Cartesian coordinate system, and you can see where the print head is currently with a little blue dot. Um, so then you can home it or move your design around according to where you want it to engrave. And then you use the boundaries button to show where the outline of the print will be, so you can roughly align it. There's a number of different print modes, such as rasterizing something into a line drawing, like a dot matrix or inkjet printer would print a graphic on. And there's vectors where you actually print the outlines, but I'd suggest you stick with basic rasterization for your very first test model. You also find a materials database in the main menu, and I consulted that to find the basic engraving of plywood needed 20% power, 3000 speed, which you then enter into the dialog box when you import your file. Finally, assuming you're in the correct position, just click the little go button in the top left next to the program. And I've got to say, everything just worked off the bat. Shockingly, there were no cabling errors, no dodgy connections. It all just worked. And I love when that happens. Um, so that was the first print I did. But from there, you're pretty much on your own to learn and experiment. And there really is a lot to learn here. All the different burning modes, along with the different materials you can work with. So I started with a couple of test images that they sent on the SD card, which came out pretty nicely, I thought. They were raster engravings, which took a fair amount of time because it works like a 3D printer. In that mode, it goes back and forth and back and forth. The Manga Girl I set at a little stronger 25% laser power, still quite fast though, so that ended up being a little bit deeper engraved. Like I said, just experiment and see with the materials that you're working with. So then I moved on to try cutting and at 100% power. So this is 1.5 mil thick uh, plywood. I just downloaded a handwriting font and sort of five minutes in Photoshop made a sign with all of the letters squished together and for one continuous cut. This time I used the vectorize settings, which means that it traces around the edge of your imported file. Now this gives a smooth edge because it doesn't move like a dot matrix, it actually follows the line as you might if you were cutting with a pair of scissors. Again though, do make sure you have some scrap wood underneath, it will almost certainly end up getting a bit burnt. Uh, but you know what, I was really pleased with the initial results, that was the first ever thing that I tried to cut. Uh, it cut beautifully and it's a lot quicker. This only took maybe 10-15 minutes total to cut, whereas something like this took about an hour to burn. I also tried cutting on three millimeter thick plywood, which was a lot more solid, but it didn't cut fully because the wood was a little bit bent. So another pro tip, clip the wood down to a piece of scrap wood to ensure a flat surface because the laser does need to be pin sharp. Otherwise you'll end up trying to snap it off and getting bits like that. I can fix that up, but. I did also try to print a photograph using the dithering method, but sadly the wood again was a little bit bent and it must have caught on the edge uh, as it skirted over. So I gave up on that one halfway through because it had already taken an hour just to do that. But that wasn't the fault of the device. You just need to make sure that the material that you're using is secure. Next up, I wanted to try Lightburn which is the third party software, more advanced. While GRBL is free and simple, it doesn't appear to let you do things like multiple layers, or if it does, it isn't in obvious in the interface. I couldn't figure out how to do it. It also doesn't have any built-in drawing tools, so you need to just import images rather than using it as a creation tool itself. Lightburn is also available for Mac, which is great because I wasn't gonna leave my VR gaming rig hooked up for this. It does have a month long trial period. After that, it costs about $60. I think it was not a huge outlay anyway, and definitely something you'll want uh, if you plan on using this a lot. I found it immensely helpful over and above the GRBL open source option. Again, it takes a little while to set things up. You do need to tweak some things in the settings and you may need some sort of trial and error. But within about half an hour of installation, I was up and running with Lightburn too. And very quickly, I was able to create multiple layers, meaning that you can fill some text, then you can outline the text if you want to, then you can cut around the text, all within the same operation. And with some standard drawing tools, you can then replicate layers, etc., or draw boxes around things to cut them out. It really feels a lot easier to work with. You can also do text, directly in there. And you can trace images to turn them into a vectored cut, which makes it super easy to just download random stuff off the internet and then cut it out of wood. As a 5.5 watt laser or 40 watt machine, one being the actual power output of the laser and the other a more common marketing term of the whole machine's 
power consumption, you can apparently cut wood up to about eight mil. You'll see some of my other attempts on acrylics in the B-roll for this review. So what are some downsides of the Totem S machine from Two Trees? There's no camera, so you can't precisely position things. Although there is an alignment laser, I can't figure out how to actually get it to align with the laser, so it's always pointed somewhere up and to the left. That's something you'd be paying thousands of dollars for if you wanted to have a camera as well, uh, compared to this, which is, what, just less than $300. There's also no end stops or fixed positioning, so it's up to you to set the origin each time if it's offset, and it can be hard to get it perfectly aligned sometimes and make full use of the material like you can see here. I tried to make this photo roughly in the middle with a one centimeter board around the edge, that didn't work. But in the grand scheme of things, if you just wanna start experimenting with laser engraving, you don't need exact positioning. This is great. Finally, you're supposed to turn off the uh, engraver when it's not in use, but there's no inline power switch. And it draws some power over USB too, which means you have to unplug both the power and the USB to completely power it down. And this might seem like a small annoyance, but it's going to increase the wear and tear on those connections. And frankly, it would have been something pretty easy for them to implement a switch of some kind on the front panel here, uh, which would have killed both the five volt from the USB and the 24 volt from the adapter. Lastly, I really should mention safety. 5.5 watts of laser power might not sound like a lot, but it's actually very powerful and you can get some very deep cuts on a variety of materials, uh, not all of which I've tested yet, although there is a safety shield around the laser. Uh, you should absolutely wear the supplied safety goggles too if you're gonna watch it work. If it did happen to reflect off of something, that would be instant eye damage. And for that reason, of course, it's not really safe to have around young children. It's not a household friendly sort of device you should absolutely secure your workshop if you're gonna have one of these in there. In fact, it might be worth investing in a laser acrylic barrier box sort of thing, perhaps an extraction fan too, because it reeks and some of the fumes that it give off are obviously gonna be dangerous if you're doing plastic or anything like that. To be honest, I've never really felt the need to do anything like that before, even with a resin 3D printer or a filament printer, they don't particularly smell um, and you know, kids can understand, don't touch, it'll burn you, but they find the concept of don't look a little bit more tricky to understand. So yeah, definitely some safety concerns, apart from the obvious fact that you could literally start a fire with this. I mean, it is, it's a mini fire, so please be careful. Anyway, on to the big question. Should you buy the Totem S from Two Trees as either a starter laser engraver or even an upgrade if you're already comfortable with something smaller? I can definitely recommend it from my experience with it so far. Obviously, I can't speak to the longevity of the laser module or anything like that, but I'm really impressed with what I've got and what it's capable of so far and the results I've got out of it. The components are, and build quality are great, even as a self-build kit. As I said, the build process itself was a little bit trickier than I'd like. It would have been nice to have, have it sort of semi-built when it arrives, but then I didn't realize there was a video on the SD card until after I'd built it. Nor did I realize that this little wooden block they supply uh, is actually a handy stand that you can put the V-slot struts or profiling in, sit it up and hold it at an angle when you're working on the wiring. So even if I did end up taking it apart and redoing bits of it, I got there after a day or so and it's working fine. I would also factor in the cost of a license for the third party Lightburn software or something else. I haven't investigated all the options, but the free GRBL software uh, included in the box is fine for bits of testing, but you'll probably want to move on to something more advanced or user friendly uh, sooner rather than later. That said, I'm really glad this is a part of my workshop now. And in the week or two I've been testing it, I've used it far more than I would a 3D printer because it's just so fun and useful. It's a lot easier to get productive uses out of it compared to say a 3D printer where you can't just you know type in some text or download any old image it has to be a 3D file with this you can you can literally burn something out of any old image again I'm not super experienced when it comes to laser engraving so maybe I'm just enamored by it I can't compare this objectively to other laser engraver machines because I haven't tried any uh, outside of little toys but I can say that this is good for the price. It does what it says, it works and it works well. So looking at this as this alone, I would thoroughly recommend it. 
Anyway, I hope this review has proved helpful to you. It's shown you some hands-on time with the Totem S and a little taster of what it's capable of. Please hit like if it has helped you and consider subscribing to our channel. If you'd like to read the full review or to buy one for yourself, then head on down to the links in the description. I'm James Bruce. You've been watching MUO Reviews. You'll find plenty more reviews, tutorials, app roundups, buying guides, and more over at our full makeuseof.com site. Until next time.